Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about something I've been very excited about since its first announcement. As of the 6th of February 2020, we now have a roadmap update and vlog 10 for Dead Matter. The update covered several large talking points such as rumours regarding map instancing, why this update took slightly longer than expected, and the planned date for the closed alpha of Dead Matter. We were also graced with a vlog jam-packed with gameplay and other juicy content, so if you haven't seen that yet, I'll include a link in the description for you to head over and watch that. I'll be breaking down some of the gameplay footage we got in the vlog step by step in the near future. For now, let's jump into the roadmap update. Nick Z writes this post, opening with an apology for the time it's taken to get this update out. The original intention was for this to be complete by the end of January, but the vlog wasn't quite finished and the team wanted to get this out with the update to demonstrate where the game is currently at. According to Nick, the team has been working double, even triple time to make sure that this update comes to us as fast as possible. Having been fortunate enough to have spoken with several of the team at length in my interviews, I have no doubt in my mind that they're giving everything to this project and I hope I speak for the entire community when I say we're prepared to wait as long as it takes for a great game. Nick dives right into a topic that has been causing quite a lot of controversy recently amongst the community, Alberta itself. There's been a lot of rumours about instancing and dead matter not being open world, but Nick quickly dispels these rumours. In his words, dead matter will, and always will be, an open world survival game. The map isn't going to be smaller than Skyrim, and it won't have instancing similar to Escape from Tarkov. After consulting with the team's mapping lead, the primary South Alberta map will be targeted for 16 kilometers by 16 kilometers. This is the original target size of the map minus the area that Calgary would have taken up. So the question arises, why does Calgary need a separate map? Calgary is a massive city and for the team a massive undertaking. Nick states that they want to have a dense urban environment which represents both the size and scale of a city. In order to pull this off, they're going to have to separate this from the main map. Essentially, this is primarily a design choice, directly tied to performance. This will hopefully mean we get a much more detailed Calgary rather than a sparse city with few enterable built buildings. Now, here's where it gets exciting. Calgary is going to feature a new set of factions, a unique set of metagame events, and plenty of new and unique locations for players to explore. Currently, the team is targeting Calgary at a 6km by 6km size, but this number may change as plans become more conclusive. Either way, an exciting prospect and a wise choice for performance, design, and immersion during gameplay. Next up, Nick addresses how this change will affect us during gameplay. In short, players will be able to travel from South Alberta to Calgary by walking to the eastern edge of the South Alberta map. This means a roughly 16 km long window and no annoying choke points for bandits to camp. There will be a loading screen as you're connected to the other map, but the team feel this isn't too bad of a trade-off for being able to preserve your character and vehicles across multiple maps. It's also worth noting that when travelling between maps, you'll incur a calorie and hydration cost, especially when spawning farther from the map border. Stock up for your journey or you'll be scavenging for supplies as soon as you hit the ground. When transferring from South Alberta to Calgary and vice versa, or simply spawning in for the first time, you'll be given a set of locations to pick from. When discovering new locations, these will be added to a list of known locations that you can spawn or respawn at. Again, we'll have several options here to prevent easily exploitable spawn locations. Following this, Nick mentions a secondary way to access Calgary, which I'm very excited for personally. The adventurous survivor can also choose between a handful of locations scattered across the South Alberta map that you can use to travel to Calgary itself. These will be well known to players, so if you're looking for action, these could be the places for you. Now, perhaps what each and every backer has been eagerly awaiting. Dates. Not the kind that I certainly won't be getting this Valentine's Day, but the kind that relates to the closed alpha of Dead Matter. The close alpha is being moved back to June of 2020. The team weren't planning for this, but they have concerns with the zombie AI at present relating to performance and want to make sure that the build is up to par for a closed alpha. Nick continues to say that they're currently in a very good state for pre-alpha and are extremely confident in the work they've put into the game thus far. Nick states, and I quote, We would like to apologise for keeping our supporters waiting for so long. 
but this is the final time that we will be having to do this and we look forward to an exciting testing period with our backers. Early access will then commence at the start of 2021. So, wow, some very exciting stuff and uh, a lot to digest. I hope this was useful for you guys and I hope you're looking forward to the closed alpha as much as I am. That said, if you've enjoyed my Dead Matter videos thus far, I'd like to invite you over to my Twitch stream. I'm always happy to talk about Dead Matter and I'd love to welcome some new faces to our community. Just search for me on Twitch or follow the link in the description of this video. I will absolutely be streaming Dead Matter once we're able, so something to look forward to there as well. Take care guys, I'll see you in the next one.